Hello, everyone, and welcome. I was almost not going to do this today. I just I, I was running all over the place and uh, just got an oil delivery, you know, going through oil like it's crazy right in here. It's getting cold out. And I said, you know something? I got to do coffee with Canon because it's important to be consistent, you know? <laughs> and if not, I'm not anything, I'm consistent, you know? So here I am, 25 seconds in, there's no one here yet. When is my first person going to show up? Yesterday, I think it was at 35 seconds, 36, 37. We're hitting there soon. I'm getting nervous. There is Blondie. 1025, you hit it at 36 seconds in. Angela Ang, go. Oh, hello, guys. Great. Look at that. that was, oh, now everyone's coming out of the woodwork. So great to see everybody. I'm sort of glad that Thanksgiving's over now. I definitely think I uh, ate a little bit too much. I'm feeling a little bit... Uh, uh, Jake, Jake, that sounds like my, my son used to, his name was Jake, Jake, Jake on his email. <laughs> uh, Barbara Cuckoo in Staten Island. Wow, good morning from Idaho. Uh, California Thunder, hey, hey, hey. So a lot of stuff going on, right? I, I, you know, anyone, I'm getting like nervous. Everyone's talking about the, this new variant of the COVID virus, you know. Morgan Ashley Roll from Buffalo, New York, Buff State. Buff State Bengals all the way. Uh, so I was, I made an appointment, um, trying to make an appointment to get the, the booster shot. I know there's a lot of uh, antivirus people here as far as getting shots and stuff, but I don't want to get that damn virus. So I, I'm trying to get an appointment to get the booster. And uh, Lorna McKenzie, how are you? Claire, hello. All you guys piling in here. It's, it's still... Um, it's still a beautiful day. It's a little, little bit cool out, but it's, uh, it's you know, it's still a beautiful day. And uh, next thing you know, remember I said the next thing you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Christmas, right? And then before you know it, people are in Times Square counting down that stupid uh, Omicron. It spells moronic. <laughs> Barbara Kakuru said Omicron. That's the variant for the COVID virus. She says. Spelling it the other way, it spells moronic. <laughs> it took you a long time to figure that one out, right? But uh, William Gully, hello from Tennessee. Great to see everyone here, you know? So I'm doing a show um, tonight with, uh, it's, it's actually 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Stephen Kehoe, who is a retired, they don't call them detectives in, in England, they call them inspectors. And he's a retired homicide inspector from Scotland Yard. Uh, and we're going to have an interesting show, compare notes. He's going to talk about how they investigate homicides, and we're going to talk about how we do it. And I'm sure, uh, you know, we didn't invent the wheel, and neither did they. So we're going to have a lot of commonality there. Yeah, 7 o'clock tonight. And on December 1st, I'm actually going to be on uh, Chrissy Mayer. I don't know if you know her. She's a female comic, really pretty, red hair. She's on um, she's on a radio show, but she has her own podcast, Chrissy Mayer Podcast. It's called The Wet Spot. Uh, hello, Amber Buck. How are you? So at 6 o'clock on Wednesday, December 1st, I'm going to be on her show. And then at 9 o'clock, uh, I'm having a... Um, how do you describe it? Uh, you know, from the people that uh, predict things. <laughs> uh, her name is Oracle Laura. She's a medium. That's the word I was looking for. She's a medium. So I want to discuss with her, uh, you know, the Gabby Petito case, the Brian Laundrie case, the Summer Wells case. And I've never, uh, psychic, right, psychic. Uh, hello, Tina Wright. Uh, I've never, in a professional capacity, uh, when I was in homicide, worked with mediums or psychics. I never did that. I don't think the NYPD, to my knowledge, has used, uh, well, they sanction, didn't never sanction the use of a psychic. But I still find it interesting. I don't know if I would find it that interesting if I was really had a, uh, you know, a stake in the game and was uh, trying to solve a case. I don't know if then if I would find it that amusing, their predictions. Um, and I don't know, uh, I mean, I don't specifically, I don't believe in it myself. I think they can predict certain things that seem coincidental, but it, I still find it interesting. So we, it's always an entertaining show. 
we had a, uh, a medium on a bunch of months ago. Her name was Barbie Dahl, D-A-H-L. Uh, and she, even though I didn't believe her, what she was talking about, it was a really interesting and entertaining show. And let's face it, hello, Tina Wright. Cheers, coffee with Ken. And I have to confess, there's no coffee in this today. So I won't even pretend to drink from it. I just have my coffee cup and of course, our dipped in butter emblem on the other side. If you guys haven't bought any merchandise for Christmas, you got to get on it, you know. Uh, Lisa Clark, you're very sad to have subscribed. Do I think cannabis should be legalized everywhere? Pretty, you know, it's up to the jurisdiction. I mean, it pretty much is everywhere. I, I just wonder um, how, how does it affect um, uh, motor vehicle accidents? Or, and does it, you know? Hello, Richella, nice to see you. Does, because it's very, uh, Lisa Clark, why'd you unsubscribe? <laughs> Unsubscribed for what? Because I'm having a medium on? Um, look, you're a master of your own destiny if you choose to unsubscribe. Uh, so, um, yes, so I don't know, um, what was I just talking? Oh, getting some merch for Christmas. Right now is probably a good time. Uh, New York City 123, will Mayor Adams do something about the open-air prostitution market in the 75 precinct? You know, I don't know how much different is, uh, is uh, Mayor Adams going to be as compared to de Blasio. Uh, I don't know how much she's going to swing to the right or to the left. I have no idea. It'll be a surprise. He happened to be there with... 10 Democratic candidates that were running for mayor were running for the nomination. And him being the most consistent with uh, uh, Patricia Burns. Yes, this is me garden, or me yard, as he call it, you know. Um, yeah, so I don't know how consistent he's going to be. He was the most consistent out of the 10 people running for the Democratic nomination in, in regards to being a law and order type mayor. And that's probably why he got elected. Linda Cosma, good afternoon. How are you? Welcome to Coffee with Cannon. I just lost a subscriber. I don't know why. Maybe she didn't like the look of my yard today. and She didn't like the, that I'm having a medium. You know, you can't make everyone happy in this podcasting business, you know. Uh, did I notice the Melody Lori Vallow's sister was arrested on YouTube at police camera, but not sure what happened. I don't know what happened either. Hello, Lieutenant Pete. Richard Brinder, good morning from Hopkins, Minnesota. The Daunted Right trial is beginning very soon. Hoping you cover it. Uh, you know what's uh, another trial? Uh, Lisa Clark, what's a personal deal breaker? I don't understand. What is a personal deal breaker? That I'm having a medium on the show? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I don't know what's displeasing you. Um, a, a trial that's uh, taking place today is... Um, Ghislaine Maxwell in New York City. And she, right, exactly, of the Ghislaine, she was uh, Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, well, she's being accused of being basically his madam of supplying him with uh, uh, his, you know, young, underage sexual partners or masseuses. And she's being charged with things that could put her in prison for a very long time. One of the things that we're all wondering about here is, are there going to be some names of some big shots coming out uh, during this trial uh, that may... Uh, Jesse Smollett, yes, there's another trial. Hey, Lieutenant Pete, uh, you're, you're talking to uh, Billy Ryan from Ryan Investigative. CRP, hello from Wichita. And the Wichita lineman is still on the line. <laughs> that was a great tune by uh, Glenn Campbell, right? And I need you more than want you. And I want you for all time. And the Wichita lineman is still on the line. Hope I hit the, the pitch the pitch correctly. So, um, yeah, so Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, Jesse Smollett, uh, but, you know, the, uh, thank you, these walls have eyes. Loved Glenn Campbell, too. He, he had an interesting story, just like um, Tony Bennett. On one of his last tours, when he was on tour with his band, he had Alzheimer's, and he started 
really losing his memory. And you know, when you're a musician, uh, I guess one of the last things you lose, you keep remembering how to sing the songs, the words, and it's, it's incredible. They showed that on a 60 Minutes thing with Tony Bennett, and he has advanced Alzheimer's, but he did a concert with Lady Gaga, and he remembered all the words, which is so, so incredible, you know? So incredible that he could remember all those words. And the same was true uh, with Glenn Campbell. And Glenn Campbell, when he, uh, when he was younger, he was a hell of a guitar player too. You know, he used to play, he played in the studio with the Beach Boys. So he was one hell of a musician. Um, Marilyn, maybe the unsubscribe because of your singing. <laughs> that could be, if someone's gonna unsubscribe because of my singing, they're welcome to it. I'm gonna still keep singing. You know, it's just like I wanna keep talking about what I wanna talk about. And people unsubscribe, that's their own business, you know. There's billions of people out there that potentially are gonna get all these billions in 2022, you know? Uh, oh, you saw Richella, you saw the Gaga and Tony Bennett thing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was real, very touching. I mean, Lady Gaga is a very talented person too. Uh, thank you, Marilyn Minetta, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so uh, a lot of different stuff coming up. Uh, I, got a, I got a great um, NYPD guy coming on on December 15th at 9 p.m. His name is John Beza. And he just wrote a book on um, a sex crime investigation and how to perform these investigations. And I guess, hello, Marie Green, good to see you. Uh, and, and so he's gonna come on the show. He's an expert in false confessions. And I, I always love when I can get a great NYPD guy. And his, um, his partner years ago was a, a guy named John Savino, who was one of the best, probably best uh, Manhattan Special Victims detectives uh, in the history of the NYPD. He was a great, great detective. And him and John Beza were partners, and they had a case uh, called the, uh, the East Side Rapist. And the East Side Rapist struck 16 times, I believe, between the years of 1994 and 1998. And even though the police department put huge amounts of resources into capturing this guy, and they still have his DNA, he's never been caught. So he committed 16 rapes in a high profile area on the Upper East Side. And despite all the resources they threw at it, all the investigators, all the crime scene, all everything, he's never to this day been caught. And John Beza, uh, who's coming on the show, as I said, December 15th at 9 p.m., he's gonna talk about that case. And they may be going to um, that ancestry uh, ancestry DNA uh, to look into that. Their theory was there was a possibility because the Upper East Side is filled with all those those embassies. They were thinking potentially he could have been a uh, the son of a ambassador. Therefore, he may have been in the country for uh, those amount of years and then went back to whatever country he was from. But in any event, uh, he, he was never caught. So John Bezos is going to talk about that, as well as a lot of other things in regards to uh, sex crime investigation, which is uh, a very specific type of investigation, a little, a little different even than homicide, similar, but a little bit different. Uh, Patricia Burns, no, he didn't write any letters to the police, but they still, to this day, they have his DNA, but as I said, it was never, ever solved. But, and they, I think they also changed, um, there used to be a statute of limitations to certain sex crimes. I think they changed that in New York State. But what they used to do to defeat the statute of limitations was they would indict the DNA profile. So the DNA profile was unknown. They didn't know who it belonged to, but it's a real person. So they came up with that idea to indict the uh, DNA profile so that the statute of limitations would not affect the case. And I think the laws have been changed now, but we'll learn a lot about it, and I'm le looking forward. And we're trying, to, um, we're trying to get Jimmy Calandra to come back on, uh, Beth, uh, Beth Avenue boys, you know, uh, Penny Sue, love you, Bill. Can't wait till more people discover you. Thank you, Penny Sue. That's very kind of you. And, you know, we're really pushing again, and I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, 
Yes, they, they found a person who killed a jogger by using the ancestry DNA and GED match. You know, some of the things they do, which is amazing, and they, in, in uh, special victims, they call this a cold hit. They'll get a hit on a person, and they have the DNA identified, and they find out that this person is in prison. So two detectives from Manhattan Special Victims say they go to the prison and they have to interview this person. And they have to they get the person to make a statement. And it sounds simple, but it's not simple because you don't tell the guy out of the box that, guess what? Your DNA, DNA was found in a rape because what's the first thing the inmate is going to say? Oh, I had consensual sex with her. So the first few things that the special victims detective has to do is they have to get the person, um, basically they interview in them a way like, say the rape occurred in a building, 3333 Broadway. Have you ever been in the building 3333 Broadway? No, I've never been in that building. Have you ever been in apartment four boy, as in B, B as in boy, never been there? Have you ever met this woman before? And they'll show a picture of the woman and the, the, the perp will, will say, no, nah, I don't know who the hell she is. And then they'll spring it on them. But guess what? Your DNA was, was removed from her in a, in a violent rape. Now, they, they, now, of course, they were, oh, you don't want to change. No, no, you just told us you swore to it up and down. You didn't know. You've never been in 30, 30, 33, 33 Broadway. And you've never been in an apartment for a boy, so guess what? You, 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 can either, you can either take this to trial or you can plead guilty. And that's how a cold hit works. And Special Victims does that all the time. DNA is a, an amazing, amazing technology, you know. So, we, you know, we had talked again. Uh, thank you, Angie. Good to see you, Angie. Um, the, uh, we had talked a lot about the whole Brian Laundry thing and how... Did they in fact know that uh, he committed suicide when there was nothing left of his body except his skull and some bones? Uh, how did they deduct that that was that he committed suicide? And I, you know, the anthropologist swore the, uh, Ed Wallace, who's on duty on show, he did a great presentation. And yeah, I accept that he died from a gunshot wound, but how do we know? that he pulled the trigger. That's what I want to know. How do you know someone else didn't put the gun up to his head? And I'm not a 100%, you know, accepting of the fact that, oh yes, uh, it's a suicide. I believe it is, but I, I would like to know scientifically, how can they say that he definitely pulled that trigger? I don't know if they can really say that. Uh, A uh, factual breakdown, she believes that the, the Laundries told the police that Brian Laundrie was in there and went in there to commit suicide. And of course, we had the water levels have been raised up in his body, but potentially was submerged. And then when it receded, that's when they found him, his backpack, the dry bag, and potentially, who doesn't believe that the FBI has the gun? I believe 100% they have the gun. I just don't believe They've announced that they have the gun, but I believe 100% they do have the gun. So, um, Marie Green, his parents, uh, you know, I, I guys, I, I put a song on uh, the Patreon today. I, I, I recorded a Fairy Tale of New York by the Pogues, and I got a, I just spoke to Josh, and I asked Josh, I was having a problem getting it on our YouTube, and I asked Josh to get it on there. So, hopefully, by the end of the day, uh, me singing fairy tale of New York and playing guitar will be on the YouTube as well as I know it's up on the Patreon site right now. But uh, so maybe more people will quit. Maybe more people will unsubscribe when they hear me singing that song. We'll see. But uh, by the end of the day, uh, <laughs> Marie Green, I agree. I think we'll get to 100,000 subs by this time next year, if not sooner. Andy, the Gabby Cabby kicking ass, huh? Uh, just me, hi, first time on your channel watching from Scotland. Just me, make sure you subscribe, all right? Hit the subscribe button, uh, ring the bell, and give us a thumbs up on YouTube. It's great to see you. I was uh, in Scotland about three years ago. My son went to the University of Edinburgh, 
and we went to Preston Field House for Thanksgiving. That was three years ago. Beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, Richella, you saw it. But it was, Richella, you saw it on Patreon, though, right? Not on the YouTube channel. Uh, uh, Slink Selena, how are you? Uh, you think Chris Laundry has the gun, not the FBI. Nice. Did you? Yeah, oh, I loved the, the Preston Field House. I loved it. I would love to go back there again. It was just an amazing, amazing place. And if I'm back in Scotland, I will definitely go there. Great food, too. Uh, Patricia Burns, my favorite Christmas song of all time, Fairy Tale in New York by the Pogues. Amazing, right? Amazing. Uh, Angela Eng, where's Joe? Joe must be working hard today, right? He's got all those cases coming up. Uh, just me, brilliant. Um, yeah, Joe's got all these cases coming up to trial in December. And uh, he's one busy, he's one busy man, you know? And uh, we, keep, we keep advertising his law firm. Maybe that's why he's getting all these calls, you know? Christina Marie, Bill Cannon, hope all is well. Really enjoy your show. Thank you so much, Christina Marie. Slink Selena, how, how are you? Uh, Angela Eng, you're on the phone with Joe? Tell him that he's missing my show. Let him know he's missing my show right now. You know, <laughs> uh, Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I like him too, Kathy Bates. Uh, do you know um, what's the, the other brilliant guy? Um, I can't think of his name. He's a University of Toronto professor, uh, and just a brilliant, brilliant man. Why can't I think of his name right now? Just uh, Justin No. Um, no, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. No, not Dan Bongino. I don't think he's in the uh, Whitey 22 Songbird. You know, the Maxwell case, I think she's probably going to get convicted and do a lot of time, you know. What a story. Like it's but the, Jordan Peterson, mediocre comedian. Thank you so much. Jordan Peterson is a brilliant man, has written books. The guy is like a walking computer, but... If you ever see him um, debate someone, he, he has just brilliant references to debunk almost anyone I've ever seen him debate. And not through anger or through yelling or anything, but just because he's brilliant. And the references he uses, he, he just totally debunks a lot of things. And uh, I have his book. I haven't read it yet. Uh, Jordan Peterson, you know, he was the University of Toronto professor who fought the university when they were trying to force him to, to uh, use certain pronouns that he disagreed with. And he fought them and took them to court and beat them. So uh, Jordan Peterson is heavy into Soviet history. You know, he's just me. He's into everything. He's brilliant. You name a topic, he's read a book on it. And that's when, you know... Uh, Mediocre comedian, he shreds them with dignity in debates, 100%. And just knowledge. You know, I can't really debate someone uh, that's really knowledgeable, say, about politics. I mean, I have my feelings and I have my beliefs, but I'm not a brilliant person in regards to being well-read on uh, politics and knowing all the, the answers, the history, uh, the laws. That's why most politicians, and I say most, have a law degree. And the ones that don't, uh, unless they're very well educated, they, so, they don't come across uh, as intelligent as the ones with law degrees. When you, when you hear them being interviewed by some of these, or interrogated uh, by some of these other politicians that Ted Cruz, a constitutional scholar, he's got a law degree, uh, I think, believe uh, Jim Jordan has a law degree. All these guys, when you see them interviewing or in interrogating, uh, Jim Jordan, uh, I saw interrogate Garland, and Garland is the uh, attorney general in regards to the um, going after the parents, weaponizing the FBI, and he he made them look pretty foolish. And you know, because a lot of these guys are former prosecutors. The other guy who was a, a senator. Uh, from South Carolina. Uh, he was a brilliant guy, too. Um, like, again, I can't remember his name right now. He just left politics, uh, and he went back into the private sector. Uh, Trey Gowdy. Trey Gowdy. Brilliant, brilliant. When I saw him interview um, Strzok from the FBI, 
uh, Trey Gowdy, you know, eviscerated Strzok. And, you know, same thing uh, with McCabe. He just, he just took them apart. And uh, Marlene Barone, Jim Jordan is like a pit bull that won't let go 100%. I think the best was Trey Gowdy, but he left politics. I used to love to watch him interview people because he was a former federal prosecutor. He was brilliant. He knew the law. He knew the questions to ask. Uh, Paul Velasco, Joe Murray doing Summer Wells case this week. We're going to touch upon um, the Summer Wells case with Oracle Laura on uh, Wednesday, December 1st. Uh, Misty Kate, great to see you guys. Cheers. This is Coffee with Cannon. I'm not going to pretend because there's no coffee in here. I just wanted to show you my cup. Uh, yeah, Trey, the, Trey is a brilliant, brilliant man. So, uh, a little water. This is coffee with cannon. You know, today, um, oh, Summer Wells is missing six months, uh, today or in the vicinity of six months. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's a horrible, horrible case. Um, you know. I don't want to just keep beating a dead horse with that, but I just feel that her parents know something about that. You know, I think Don and Candace know something. I really do. It just, the whole thing doesn't make any sense, you know? And um, you notice how quickly Dr. Phil get off that case. Now it's not paying the rent anymore, right? He's no longer interested in that case. Uh, well, what you need to do is go back to South Carolina and see if you can find your daughter. Because I sure as hell ain't going to do it. <laughs> Kathy Bates, Misty Kate, member for two months. Great. Uh, Mahari Buchanan, Ruth Ann Griffin. Good to see all you guys, man. Sana Elise Holt Johnson. Poor little darling girl. Not a fan of Dr. Phil. Me neither. On December 15th, it's going to be uh, six months. Yeah, it's just crazy, you know. Crazy, crazy. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Uh, Angela Eng is in the chat. Mediocre comedian, oh, he makes me sick. You know, when I see him with his $50,000 watch, I know I keep harping on that and then advising people that, like, you know, are on welfare. I, I, it sort of makes me laugh. Like, dude, yeah, you really know. You've really walked in their shoes, you know. You came here with your PhD and Oprah pushed you forward. And now you're a, a famous talk show host making a fortune, you know, and the power of TV. And God bless you, man. The American dream. But don't give me any advice because I wouldn't listen to you because you've never walked in my shoes or walked in the shoes of any working man, you know? The lamb is the light. Her parents know, it seems. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, Misty Kate, man, it's getting colder and colder out in my yard. I should have put the, uh, I should have put that gas heater on, you know? <laughs> Sound like a horse, you know? So, uh, so tonight, again, 7 p.m. tonight, we have Stephen Kehoe from Scotland Yard, former inspector, 30 years. Uh, yeah, tonight, Kimberly Myers, uh, his name is Stephen Kehoe, and I think we'll have some fun tonight. I think you know, that's the biggest thing. It's the most important thing. Have fun, right? You got to have fun with this show. With this, this YouTube stuff, people subscribe, people unsubscribe, people subscribe. You hit, a, you hit a plateau and you go, and then you lose 100. It's like, it's crazy, you know, but hey. I'm not, uh, I'm not digging a hole. I'm not, I don't have a pickaxe and a shovel in my hand, right? I have a, I, I have a, I have a YouTube channel, you know, and I'm a retired NYPD sergeant. Who's better than me, as they say, you know? Uh, Amber Buck, I love Stephen. Cool. I guess you've seen Stephen before, you know? So we'll take it easy on the Scotland Yarders, you know? We don't want to come across as cocky NYPD coppers, you know? Do you guys in the chat, other than the people that were former cops, former members of the service. Do you guys know what COP stands for? And I know you NYPD guys are going to come right in the chat and give it up. Let me see if any of you guys do. <laughs> it ain't a yard, it's a garden. That's right. Uh, what does COP stand for, you guys? Come on, this is a quiz. Yes, I'm in New York. Fuzzy Doxy loves Ted Cruz. What does COP stand for? Come on. No, not copper badges. Cheers, Sergeant Kimberly Myers. Good to see you. Linda Cosmo, constable on patrol. Yes, she wins the prize. Constable on patrol. That's why when people refer to us as cops, 
it's it's great. It's a it's a compliment. Constable on on patrol, and uh, we learn that in the academy. That's one of the first things you learn. Oh, cop means constable on patrol, and it comes from Great Britain. It comes from the other side of the pond, as they might say in my garden. Sitting out in my garden, <laughs> it's so good. Copper's brass. Linda got it. That was good. That was that was great. That you, I hope you didn't Google it. I hope you figured out you knew it somehow. Uh, the right people will stick around for sure. Just me. Laugh out loud. So good to see everyone. Um, guys, I have to uh, actually go somewhere and uh, another errand. But I just, we're at 30 minutes. I'm going to have to cut it a tiny wee bit short. A wee bit. Isn't that what they say in, in, in London? A wee bit. He's a wee boy. How's your wee boy doing? I remember an Irishman said that to me once when my son was younger. He goes, how's your wee boy? <laughs> I love that. I love different language, you know. Uh, Linda Cosma from the Bobbies. Yes, yes, that's true. So, guys, have a wonderful day. This has been Coffee with Cannon. And uh, hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great day and be safe.